Hi guys, my name is Zach, and today I'll be teaching you how to create a 2D animation controller in Unity. As you can see, I've already got a level set up here with my character in it, uh, so we will be starting from this point. Uh, if you want to learn how to get here, you can check out my uh, previous two tutorials for this in the description down below. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we have our character here. Uh, this is just downloaded from the Martial Hero asset in the asset store. The link for this is in the description down below as well. Uh, and we've already got him set up with a character controller and some colliders. So if we click play, we can see that the character can move around, he can jump, um, and he, can, he has gravity and interacts with the terrain. Um, you'll notice though that he doesn't have any animation when he's like walking or jumping. So that's what we'll be fixing today. All right, so let's go ahead and head over to our projects tab down here and create a new folder. We're gonna call this animations. Then we're going to open up Martial Hero, go to sprites, and you'll see there's a couple different sprite sheets in here. And what we wanna do is we wanna turn these into animations. So let's start with the idle animation, expand this out, click on the first one, hold shift, and then select on the last one. This will select all seven images in the animation and just drag this into your editor over here. And we'll call this an idle animation or idle anim. All right, and we should now have this animation here. So we're gonna take these. So this is what's called an uh, animation controller. Um, we don't need this right now, so you can actually just delete it. Uh, and we're gonna do this for all of the animations in here. So do it again for the jump, call it the jump animation. All right, now that we have animations created for all of our different animations, and the name here doesn't matter a whole lot, uh, use control click to select each and every one of these animations. Right click. And we're actually just going to, instead of right clicking. So you have them all selected, just drag all of these into your assets animations folder over here. Now if we go in here, you'll see that we have all of our animations that we created. Now we're gonna create a new animation controller. So if you go to create animation controller, and we'll call this character animator. So you'll see when we have the uh, animation controller selected here, it comes up and you'll see that it has no base animations. It just has an entry state, um, and some extra boxes. So we actually want to start this off by throwing in our idle animation. And once you drag it in, you'll see it automatically creates a transition line from entry into idle animation. That means this is the first animation that will play and it will be the default if no other animation is playing. Uh, but we'll set that up in a second here. Once we have that one thing set up, let's go ahead and put this animation controller on our character. Um, any animations that you created, you can go over here and delete them. Um, Let's go to our character and let's just drag our animation controller onto the character. Once we've attached our animator to our character, we can actually go and click play and see that he's already animated. You can see that the animation is already moving quite fast, so we want to slow it down a little bit. So I'll go ahead and turn it off here, open up our animation controller again, go into our idle animation, and change the speed to uh, like 0.5. And let's see what that looks like. All right, it looks like that is a little slower, but it's still a little too fast. Um, so we'll slow that down and then move on to the next thing. So we'll open up the animation again and we'll change it to 0.33, uh, 0.25. All right, and now we wanna add the next animation. So if our character is moving, we want him to play the run animation. So 
let's drag the run animation in here. And we want to set up a transition from our idle animation to the run animation. So if you right click on this, you can click make transition and connect it to another animation. And we also want to be able to transition back from running to idle. So we'll make the transition back the other way as well. And if we click on this transition, you'll see that it tries to blend the two animations together. And there's a little bit of like an exit time. So we want to bring this down to start the transition immediately. And it should be probably pretty quick. So if we bring this down, that shortens the amount of time it takes to transition from one animation to the other one. And this still may be too much. Um, let's go ahead and go with that and then do the same thing on transitioning back. So start immediately and do it pretty quick. Uh, now, we don't want him to just randomly change this transition. We only want him to switch to the running animation if the character is actually moving. So what we want to do is actually go over to parameters and create a new parameter here. And it's a Boolean. And we'll just call is, is moving. And by default, it is false. So what we need to do now is actually mark this as true when our character is moving. And then in our transition here, so when we're transitioning from idle animation to run animation, we want to have a condition. So if we add this condition here, is moving to true, then it will automatically trigger this transition to switch him from idle animation to run animation. And we'll do the same thing to go back. If moving is false, then it will automatically transition back into idle animation. In order for this to work, we need to just be able to set this is moving variable to true uh, whenever our character is moving around the screen. So we'll do that in our character controller. So let's pull up the character controller and just go to the three dots here and select edit script. And this will pull up in Visual Studio. All right, now that our character controller is up, the first thing we wanna do is create a new variable we're going to call this a private variable. And it is going to be an animator. This is the controller for our animations. We'll just call it anim. And when we first start the game, we want to initialize this to get the animator that is currently attached to this character. So anim equal to get component animator. Now we can access the animator anytime we need to in our character. So now what we want to do is actually declare a new Boolean value called is moving. So we'll say bool is moving. And we're going to set this equal to basically the result of an if statement. So if x axis is not equal to zero, so if he's moving left or moving right, then this is going to evaluate to true. Now, if he is not moving at all, this will evaluate to false, and we can use that to control our animator. So now we can just go into anim.setBool, and we know it's called isMoving, and we're gonna set that to the isMoving variable that we just declared. And I'll just make sure that that's named correctly in the animator and it is a lowercase i. So I'll change that. And if we save this, now we should see our run animation anytime we're moving left or right. So let's go ahead and head back to Unity and click play and we'll see if it works. So it looks like it is working, but the transition is taking too long as I thought. So we actually want the, the transition to be pretty much instantaneous. So if we go back into our animator and we open up these transitions, um, just say has no exit time and then change this to zero and do that for the other one as well. So no exit time and drop this all the way down and then we'll click play again. And now it's pretty much instantaneous. Perfect. So now we have a running animation for our character. Cool. So the next thing we want to do is head back to our animator and do the same thing for jump. So we'll take our jump animation and we'll create some transitions. 
set the exit time to zero for these because our jump is instant also. And do the same thing here. And we need to create a new Boolean for is jumping. So new Boolean is jumping. Might help if I spelled it correctly. All right, and then we need to add that Boolean as a condition for these as well. So if you are in the idle animation and you are jumping, then go to true. And that you are jumping, then do the jump animation. If you're in the jump animation and you are no longer jumping, so if is jumping is false, then we want to go back to our idle animation. Um, but the, this interaction is a little bit more complex than that, right? Because you can also jump while you're running. So we need to set up an animation from run animation to jump animation and vice versa. So make transition. And so we'll do the same thing here. We'll set the transition time to zero no exit time and then we'll add is jumping to true go to jump animation and if is jumping is false we can go back to the running animation if is moving is still true so if is moving is true and is jumping is true then we can jump and if we are not jumping but still moving, we can transition back to running. So that way we have kind of a smooth transition to jump from any animation that we have currently. Uh, and we'll do another one shortly for falling um, for when our jump kind of times out. So let's go ahead and go back to our character controller and add an is jump method or uh, control our animator for when we're jumping. So anytime we jump in this jump method we want to set our jump animator to true so anim dot set bool equal to is grounded and we want to do this after our is grounded is updated this is a string because it's the name of the parameter we have in our animator um, that we set up here is jumping. So let's change that. And we want to pass it the value of is grounded because that's the variable we're using to determine if our character is on the ground or not. All right, so let's go ahead and play this. And so we have our run animation, but our jump animation is not working. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on. So a cool way to look at what is currently happening in your animator is to set it up side by side like this. So if we drag this over, we can actually see what animation our character is currently in when we click play, um, because it'll show on the left here, right? And it also shows you the value of your, your variables on here. So if we go back to our game, you can see when we run, he switches to the run animation. And when we jump, he should be switching to the jump animation, but he's not. So um, that's because our variables are incorrect, I think. So this is correct and this is correct. However, when we're changing it in our code, we're setting it to if we're on the ground or not, which is the inverse of what we want. So we want to change this to the opposite. So if we are not grounded, then set jumping to true. So let's try this. All right. Okay, and there's our jump animation. But it looks like he never comes out of the jump animation. Uh, because we don't set it back to false when we're not jumping. 
So if we go back to our controller here, um, so if, let's see, so whenever we update is grounded, we should also update the animator. So animator dot set bool is jumping is equal to is grounded. The inverse of is grounded, otherwise he'll stay jumping. All right, so if we hit yes there, and then we click play, we have running, we have jumping, and when he lands, he switches back to running or idle. Perfect. And that is how we set up a animator for a 2D character. Uh, obviously, you can make this as complex as you want, so you can add another an another animation in here. You could take your attack animation and do a transition on here, um, and then in your code, you can add you know an attack method saying, "Oh, well, if my character is pressing a key, just like we are up here, so if our attack button is being pressed, call this attack method." And then in the attack method, you'll do the same thing. You'll call this set bool, and you'll set attacking equal to true whenever your character is performing an attack. And then once the attack is complete, you can actually set it to automatically transition back to the idle animation. So you make a transition, and then just make sure that it has an exit animation for something like that, so that you can know exactly how long your attack's gonna last. That is uh, the gist of how you'll set up an animator controller in Unity. So my challenge to you is for you guys to actually go ahead and create a attack animation, hook it up to your character, and make it respond to input in your character controller so that the animation appears on screen. If you need help, let me know in the comments down below or send me a message, and I'll link to the completed copy in my description down below. If you like this video, if you learned something, please like and subscribe. If there's something you'd like to see me do in the future, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.